thank you organizers for giving wonderful progress you can imagine how much i have enjoyed it i wish i could be louder but i think you have to bear with me today i request you to bear with me i know i'll be very short i can't talk much we are going to talk about phenoendo types of severe asthma particularly type 2 low asthma and the question which comes into the mind of every post graduate is what is this t2 we know t2 is inflammation t2 inflammation what is t2 inflammation you can see like this this picture beautifully shows either driven by ig or eosinophils and if not it is t2 low not allergic not eosinophilic and different kind of cells and different kind of cytokines ige eosinophil il5 il13 il4 on one side of the story neutrophils th17 cells totally different mechanisms on the other side but what you can see here on the top there is what is called as tslp what is this tslp thymocyte lymphoprotein lymphoprotein what is this stromal lymphoprotein molecule this is that on the top of the epithelium whatever hurts the epithelium this comes as the first encounter so when we talk about this this diagram will help you to pictureize what i'm talking about and i will start with perhaps this kind of a case yeah sorry <clears throat> i discussed this case yesterday and i bring it particularly to the perspective of severe asthma in india to be discussed here today you can see 68 years bmi 33 male asthmatic for 35 years 30 years significant comorbidities rhinosinusitis gerd osa hypertension diabetes osteoporosis imagings all normal look at the biomarkers hdm positive ig 778 eosinophils 210 pheno 15 what are we looking at t2 high or t2 low ige or eosinophil i hear some voice i can't shout you people can shout actually come on bomi out tell me what is it t2 high very good so you can see that number of exacerbations requiring oral corticosteroids and hospitalizations prior to intervention two and a half years of omalizumab bronchial thermoplasty mepolizumab two years and benralizumab for two, now one year what's the difference hardly any so what kind of severe asthma is there in india what options we have clearly unmet needs clearly unmet needs how much this is the study which we published last year severe asthmatic patients screened in severe asthma clinic how many are t2 low 15% much lower number as compared to the west which reports 30 to 50% why what are the cut marks you can see eosinophil 300 ig 30 this is the standard which we used for this study so is this eosinophil good enough as a number for cut off or is this ige number is good enough for the cut off requires more research but the other aspect of this study was that whenever those 85% of patients of severe asthma who are eligible for biologicals 50% of them 
are eligible for more than two biologicals. And in India, it is very important for us, and I repeatedly say this, choose your biological very judiciously. And that's the most important step which you need to do up front on the day when you decide that this biological I am going to start in this patient. So I talked about this respiratory epithelium. Whenever it gets hurt, it releases a cytokine, which is epithelial cytokine. And what is that? TSLP. Which is common for T2 high as well as T2 low asthma. This cytokine is not only responsible for repair, immunity of the epithelium, but also for destruction and damage to the respiratory epithelium. And you can see that this is one of the main cytokine which is orchestrating the T2 low asthma also, which perhaps can be looked at as one of the cytokine which can be neutralized by using a monoclonal antibody against this. What is this T2 low asthma to you in your clinics? How do you know this is likely to be a T2 asthma? Low. So these are smokers, these are elderly people, as well as these are those who are obese with asthma. These are posigranulocytic or neutrophilic asthmatics. How do you recognize them in your clinic? Difficult. You can only predict an obese asthmatic or a patient who has been also a smoker, elderly, not very bad lung functions, not very severe asthma, but very troublesome to them, is the one which is a typical prototype of T2 low asthma. Again, when we looked into it, that this is only 15% with the eosinophil count of 300 as a cutoff, and one of the biologics in India has a cutoff of 150, and if you do that, how many actually are T2 low asthma in this scenario? And the number reduced to 9, 9%. So if you come to one particular aspect of how many severe asthmas in India are, uh, are uh, uh, <clears throat> eligible for biologicals as per the label on the drug A, B, C, then 90%. Only 10% are the one who keep suffering like the case which I showed you. Very confusing. What are the options? Look at Gina, <clears throat> Lama, and low-dose azithromycin. I know all my friends stand, sitting here in front and especially the WIP branch who's smiling away that these we give anyways to every patient before even considering them for biologicals. True, these are the options, but we exhaust our options very frequently in these situations because that much is severe asthma in India. We have estimates of 4%. If we talk about 30 million, what would be that 4%? Imagine the number. And then we have anti-IL, 4R antagonists, anti-IL, uh, anti-TSLP antagonists, oral corticosteroids, bronchial thermoplasty. Very little options. Let's see. What are this new? Because now Gina is talking about in T2 low asthma, IL 4R receptor blocker or TSLP blocker. But before proceeding, correct your basics. And the basics are, is it asthma? And I personally feel T2 low asthma is most frequently overdiagnosed as asthma. Many of them don't have asthma at all. And we have to be very cautious by our diagnosis, looking at their therapies, comorbidities, allergen and environmental exposures, as well as doing certain more investigations like sputum, not only for eosinophils, but also for tuberculosis and other respiratory pathogens, as well as a bronchoscopy when indicated. If you do anything and everything, still 
vocal cord dysfunction dysfunctional breathing inducible vocal cord dysfunction and small airway disease can be the mimickers where patient continue to suffer as t2 low asthma and have actually a different phenotype of t2 low which can be tackled without the biologicals i think as a physician or a chest physician our job is much more difficult because we have to screen for so many things in india before choosing them for biologics so what is the new kid in the block tezipelumab what is it a monoclonal antibody targeted against tslp so a missile which is to be sent into the circulation which is primed to attack tslp which is the epithelial cytokine and expected to block every kind of interaction which happens t2 high or t2 low does it work so there are uh, you can see here six clinical trials out of which two are the large very important trials on the basis of which they have been approved pathway navigator they are the two most important trials i want to let you go through the all trials just two slides and one slide is this which tries to show that in two trials which were uh, pulled together data that is pathway and navigator irrespective of your baseline biomarker levels whether of ige or pheno or absolute eosinophil count in the blood the drug is effective and that's a very important aspect regardless of its ocs use so whatever is the biomarker level which is the main feature for us at the moment to distinguish between t2 high and t2 low asthma it does not matter so long as tezipelumab is given it looks so am so in, uh, interesting and enthusing to us but we do not have the drug right now here but where all it impacts so you can look at the pool data look at the end points of course the most important end point is annualized decrease in exacerbations in asthma which is seen in both the trials irrespective of the eosinophil value or ige total values but it is also important to see that it is a very well tolerated drug you might ask that what are the side effects of this drug it did show improvement in lung functions as well as quality of life and you can see that the side effect profile is almost matching what was the placebo arm in these trials so this biological is definitely promising and perhaps worth waiting for another one year for our t2 low asthma patients my voice has become better suddenly i do not know how so i am supposed to shout more then i will i think be better good but i am also already coming to the end of my slides talking about lama how does lama help in gina step 5 you can see track 1 track 2 lama is the first addition there is some confusion lama is even added in step 4 also and many of us are using it in step 4 also so you can use it in a separate inhaler or a triple inhaler and you can see all three triple inhalers are available in india how lucky we are all three whether it is baclomethasone formetrol glycoperineum fluticasone velitrol ubiquitinum or mometasone indacatrol glycoperineum all of them are available twice a day once a day dry powder inhaler or meter dose inhaler nebulizer solution everything is available still we will have uncontrolled severe asthma step 5 it's really something which we need to look beyond that what we can do even beyond lama and beyond lama we have azithromycin three times a day monday wednesday friday 500 mg you need to check ecg looking at qtc repeat at one month and that's very important aspect is it can cause mot so you need to rule out mycobacterial infection at the onset and keep doing it at every exacerbation to see that there is no additional burden of a tuberculosis whether it is ntm 
or non ntm or a typical tuberculosis infections in these patients diarrhea i don't think so i have ever stopped azithromycin prophylaxis in severe asthma patients on account of diarrhea gastric upset in very few but by and large the scare of spending money on biologicals azithromycin is very well tolerated and it is tolerated for years many patients are maintained they obviously it needs to be for 6 months shown to reduce exacerbations definitely and what's the last choice this is the last slide also last choice last slide and concluding slide oral corticosteroids 7.5 mg per day with the drastic side effects which are expected to occur within 3 months even with the that low dose i know lot of my friends here not are using oral corticosteroids on a maintenance dose that's why all the time we are talking about is there a role of early initiation of biologics where we do not hit that point where we need to use oral corticosteroids is it a dream or is it a reality or it is the cost which is ultimately going to tell us how to manage them but this is the situation of t2 low asthma in india from the severe asthma clinic which i could bring to all of you thank you for bearing with me as well as my voice thank you very much